what's going on everybody for First We Feast. I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones, the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. Today I'm joined by Martin Garrix. He's always traveling, he's always touring. He's got a single in the name of love that's burning up the charts right now. Just performed it on Fallon, I understand, right? Yeah, we just got here from, from Fallon. And then you walk across the street over to this Wayne's World operation, quite the fall from grace. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here. You I are? Think I'm at least just as nervous to be here than I was there at Fallon because of all these sauces. So. And we've been trying to work it out for a while. Finally, we got you, Martin. I'm, I'm happy so happy to be, to be here. here. How are you with hot food? Not good, but I'll do my best. All right, you ready to get it going? Let's, let's do it. So the first one is Sriracha. So growing up in the Netherlands, I know that you used to play your parents' friends' weddings, and that's sort of how you got your start. But I have to imagine that there's something about those humble beginnings that you miss. I miss everything. Yeah. I, no, for me, every show is different, you know? I love playing festival shows, but I also really love very small, intimate club shows where you, it's easier to connect with the people. Of course, weddings, it's not really a DJ set, you mainly just background music, but that was also fun. Like, I would be like doing the music and then someone would come up with like a CD, like, hey, can you please play this? And if that happened right now, I would freak out, but I know it, it's very, it was very funny. And I learned a lot from it as well. You take small bites. Martin, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna regret this. Martin, I'll remember you said that. I'll remember you said that. <laughs> this is too? a free throw. You're Big Bite Martin. If you wanna just keep <laughs> no, taking I'm big bites, keep okay. taking big bites. No, mind. I'll take small bites. All right, so I know that you love pizza, and there's a whole corner of the internet that's sort of dedicated to Martin's love for pizza. Where's the best pizza in the world? I've had uh, the best pizza in my life in Naples, in Italy. It, like, it is Italy, isn't it? For me, it's it's in Italy, and um, we went there to a super local place, and we met like the, the chef, and it was with like mozzarella and mushrooms. It was amazing. I love pizza. So, <laughs> watch this big ass bite I'm about to take. That's a big bite. <laughs> so, I know that you went to the Herman Brood Academy. For those who don't know, this is kind of a trade school for music production, right? It's kind of like a DJ college. It's cool because when I went to high school, I was this weird dude, like making me, I had this hobby, which n not really a lot of people had. Then I went to the Herman Broad Academy and everybody had the same passion, had the same love for music and the same love for producing. So instead of talking about football or something during the school breaks, we would talk about new plugins and like nerd stuff. And for me, it was, it was super much fun. And it must've been a strange time in your life if what I understand is true. Did animals come out when you were in your first year? There? Yeah. Yeah, for me, that was, that was uh, really insane. I made animals, at the end of the first year and I started touring and or like getting show requests, not doing full tours, but I would I would like play shows on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Sunday night after show fly back to be uh, in school on Monday. Was it hard to take your professors seriously? Because I think it would be for me. If that <laughs> happened to me, I'd be a cautionary tale. I'd be such a nightmare to all my teachers because I'd be like, no one can tell me anything. It was weird for everyone, including me, but for me, I went to that school to learn more. It was really, really helpful and I, I don't think I was such a dickhead. Pain is good, Louisiana <laughs> I'm, style. I'm afraid for this picture. <laughs> Very... The picture tells the story of the sauce. Yes. Pain is good. Embrace it. No one in the world, I think, travels better than you, whether it's yacht life or it's the private jet situation. But every once in a while, you'll end up on a floor at Miami International and have to fly commercial with the farm <coughs> animals like me. But I have to know, what's the best mode of transportation in your opinion? Is it the helicopter? Is it the yacht? Is it the PJ? What's the situation? I love bikes. Bikes? Yeah. I'm from Amsterdam, everybody rides bikes there, and I used to always drive my bike to school. You're just very portable, so I, I, I would go for a bike. Is the Wi-Fi good on private jets or not so good? Is it spotty? It's, it's, there's not even Wi-Fi on all the jets I fly. Wow. Wow. I sound like such so, a spoiled brat. No, it's but. not though, but it's, no, it's not. It's true. It's true. When you live life, when you live life, these are things that you experience. These are things that people are curious about. You don't have to apologize for that. Cool. Plus, that's a good point. Like everybody thinks like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Not even good Wi-Fi. Maybe you are better off. You probably have the best Instagram of anyone that we've ever had on the show. And we like to do deep dives on Instagrams. Cool. Find some pictures that we think are interesting that need more context. 
You can right. give me the story behind the picture. That's awesome. I'll do it. All right. You have a lot of pictures like this, but I need to point it out because the energy looks so crazy. The pyrotechnics. Do these all sort of blend together or do you remember this moment? Can I look it up close? Yeah. I... Yeah. Isn't that crazy how you can create a spectacle like this? I think this but is. But because it happens every night, they all kind of blend. I think it, this, this was Japan. No, I think I do like 150 shows a year. It's a cool part from the show. Like, I, I do the music and stuff, but there's so much more going on. There's like S effects, like the pyro, fireworks, um, CO2, then you have like lights, lasers, visuals. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really fun. Building, building a show. Is it ever distracting for you? It gets very distracting when it gets launched at the wrong time. I was in Russia recently and um, it was not someone from my team queuing it. And I was, it was a beautiful moment. It was gold skies, like everybody, chill. like super pretty, chill. And then suddenly it was like. <laughs> <laughs> this one, you and Bill need to know what's going on with you and Bill Clinton here. I met him in Vegas. He invited me for his foundation to play poker with him. And then as soon as I arrived there, uh, they ID'd me and I'm I'm 20 so I wasn't allowed in the casino. <laughs> but he's so, like, all right, I'll take so a picture he though. he came outside, took a photo and then he left. Now this is something <laughs> that you do every once in a while where you'll be in this sort of opulent grand setting and then you'll just be sitting there by yourself. Like you'll be on stage, you're surrounded with so many people but then when you get to the hotel room you're, you're by yourself, you know? And this was I think one year ago and it was such a, such a big table and they set up the entire Table because they expected me to be there with so many, so I was like, I'm just gonna sit down. You ready to move on? <laughs> One second, I just literally put like the hot sauce in my hair. Well, they see it, maybe it's good for product. <laughs> I love this interview. You do? I do. So when I think about somebody of your age on the come up, every time I got a little more notoriety, <laughs> I'd be. <laughs> this is like late. To <laughs> 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 everything out. attack me. <laughs> Oi. Okay. All right, like sweating. When I'm watching your tour diary, I'm yeah. seeing you and I'm watching you grow up and you're sort of experiencing all these things and it's like trying out new superpowers. Like when Spider-Man understands that he's Spider-Man. Give me a time when you know, you as a young international star with a big professional team and all that that holds, used your power despite what the people around you were saying for good. Uh, I accidentally leaked the Ultra Main stage this year. Um, what does that mean? Can you explain that to me? Ultra is like the biggest... I'm, I'm dying right now, by the way. My That's the like show. Shooting. That's okay. the fun. I'm trying to stay focused. Um, Ultra is like this big festival for a house and electronic music. And um, I don't know, I was rehearsing with my team in the room and on the, on the photo that I posted on my Instagram, you could see the screen. And I thought it, the screen was already on the internet, but then this blog made it like huge news, blew it up, went viral, and I got so mad. I wrote this long ass comment on this blog from my Martin Garrix uh, Facebook. Right, so they Facebook. post the article and you're in the comments yeah. on Facebook. I think we have like 8 million followers on, on Facebook. So if I post something, they will all see it. And um, I had like three people from my team saying like, don't post it, don't post it, don't post it. They want a reaction, don't do that. No, I'm Be better I'm than, fucking... don't, don't do that. And then I accidentally hit the enter button. And it felt good, didn't it? It felt so good. It's just... No, this is, this is... You want to post that? Yes. I said, um, stop creating clickbait articles. Um, the ultra stage was already on the internet. I don't know, it was much longer, a little bit more aggressive. It felt amazing. Still, Are you happy you did it? I'm so happy. That's when I was like living vicariously through you and your life, that's what I was thinking about and how I would always just be pushing buttons and testing people and everybody would hate me. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> and you know that one's gonna hit. You can just tell. I feel it, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Just being backstage. Wait, one second. <laughs> I just need to walk it off. You just gotta walk it off. There's no problem walking it off. I've had many laps taken in this studio. Oh, give me just here. a second. Take a walk, take a lap. Fuck. Oh my god, that was spicy. <laughs> Fuck, dude, that shit fucking hurts. It's like, it's not even in my mouth, it's just here. Mm -hmm. like, That's what it does. It takes over <laughs> the body. 
it's, thinking it's I'm a, almost running out, so I was gonna ask your milk. Yeah, man. And then here, I looked listen, at this, this thing. Listen this over to you, Martin. I'm a very good host. Thank I'm you so much. Host. And then I looked at this, mm -hmm. and then I totally forgot what you were saying. Yeah, that's how it goes. It's it's a uh, it's coming from all sides here cool. on hot ones. Do you remember during the come up, walking red carpet or being backstage somewhere, and someone that you didn't think know that you were you came up to you and you're like, "Yo, are you Martin Garrix?" I met Pharrell, and Pharrell is like my biggest idol. And he was like, uh, uh, "Respect, I love your stuff." But for me, like uh, I was the happiest guy for like a week. First time it ever happened was with Chesto, who was like who was and still is my idol. Like I I started making music and listening to electronic music because of him, and then. I have nothing. One day he just followed me on Twitter and sent me a message like, Yo, your shit is dope. Can I release this song of yours on my label? Because he heard a demo of Torrent. And this was before Animals. And then Chester released Torrent, I think, in four years ago on his label, Musical Freedom. Don't die. Martin, you can always tap out. That's a thing that you can always do. <sighs> no. So this is the bomb. Beyond Insanity hot sauce. It says this is very caution hot. on it. Mm hmm. But listen, if you listen to Caution, would you have made it this far in life, Martin? No. No. This is a dreamer's game. I wrote the big bike. Fuck. I have to buy like so, seven lots of people like mm. my, lots of strategies. This is so stupid. I took such a big bite and I have to buy it like so many times in my mouth before I can spar it. Everybody's got a different strategy. Never seen this one before. It's horrible. Can you talk to me about climbing killing? <laughs> I used to have something like This was the most horrible one. Mm-hmm. Except for these two. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Embrace it, love it, live it. <clears throat> Can you tell me about climbing my one second. <laughs> I miss wing too. Everything went fine until about here. This right? one. Or the, this uh, one. Th these were. These were. Tough. This one was amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate that. This one fucked me up. It's a bomb. Yeah, it feels like a bomb. You back with us? Yeah. All right. Can you tell me about climbing Kilimanjaro? It was interesting. It was fun. I can't even talk properly. It was fun. It was. I'm dying. How was the view from the top? Amazing. Beautiful. M most beautiful view I've ever seen. Really? Nothing will ever beat that view. The top of Kilimanjaro. Do you guys have showers here? <laughs> no, it's just an office. <laughs> So I'm obsessed with tour riders because sometimes they're outrageous and sometimes they're unique and you can always learn a lot about the person. So I wonder, what's on yours? You talked about putting the sauces on. No, I think definitely not. Crossing that off the list? Yeah, I think my, my ride is pretty normal. Just straight I, up? I have to step it up. Yeah, because that's the thing is the other thing you can do is you can kind of play games with venues and promoters and stuff and just put weird items on there and just see if they'll fill the request, you know? A big move is to go with just green M&Ms and stuff. Oh, that's stupid. That's cliche. It's, no, but that's, what that's, would Martin that, do? There was just someone who's gonna sort them out I, like it's not cool what would I you think do? I would do something ridiculous like a llama or like the most or a penguin penguins I you would love get to penguins. Have, yeah that would be dope that's what you should do yeah. next time you do Lollapalooza I'm not doing it unless you unless you put some penguins in it yeah alright <laughs> everyone is loving this except okay. except for you I love and it me too. no one ever thinks about me no you, one ever you, thinks you, about me I have to do this. This is my job. You know what kind of existence that is? It's a great job. Everybody comes in here, does it one time, they get these victory laps. Somebody a standing ovation and pats on the back, and nobody ever thinks about Sean over here. All right, so. Mm -hmm. Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage, as the name would imply. It is not a very fun hot sauce. It's tradition around here to dab the last wing. You don't have to if you don't want to. Wait, what? So like I kind of put like a fresh little dollop on there. No, it's, you're out of your mind. Oh, that I didn't mean to do. Anyway, if you want to pass on that move, you can. 
It's the difference between this one and this one a lot. Listen, I don't wanna- I feel like this one should have been here. So that's the thing, everybody reacts to these hot sauces differently. So like to me, this one's like bad. I would agree with you, these are the four worst, but I would say that our guests say in overwhelming numbers that Mad Dog 357 is a tougher sauce to endure than Blair's Are you just saying this so, to make me eat this one? No, because to me, you're at the point anyway. You've already gone there. It doesn't matter really how hot this sauce is. You're already, you're already at the intersection. Fuck. The car has left Let's do the it. garage. I love it. I love it. You dabbing or not dabbing? You don't have to dab. I'm not. Okay. One second. <laughs> oh, brought the feeling back. This is horrible. It's tough to escape. Okay, cheers. Cheers. All right, cheers, Martin. <laughs> tough for me, ass. Quite for me. Ah! So, like we talked about before, when you're an internationally famous, renowned DJ, they lay out the red carpet for you. <laughs> it's always the penthouse. It's always the nicest hotel room. So I want, while you're dying of hot sauce, for you to describe in as much detail you can as you can the nicest hotel room you've ever slept in. Uh, wow. I love you. <laughs> so much. You want some milk? It's all you, man. Thank you, brother. All the way to the brim. What was the question? Nicest hotel room you've ever been in. Um, jacuzzi. Check. Almost a swimming pool. Like one of those where, like, it could, if you had people swimming in it, like the room underneath would see. Wow, people, people swimming. swimming in it. Dream hotel, I think. Uh, crazy expensive though, but it was very nice if someone else pays for it. Martin, you made it through. It was so amazing, so heroic. You came out the other side, I think looking better than you did when you started. No. I look at wing number 10, Martin. I look at wing number one, Martin. I'm setting my friend up with wing number 10, Martin. The floor is now yours, this camera or that camera. Tell the world what you got going on in your life. <laughs> Plug time, Martin. Guys, I just released my new single with Bibi Rexa called In the Name of Love. I hope you enjoy it. I still want to go out tonight.